Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a mobile match game in Unity. In this series, we are making a mobile match game, which I'm releasing this fall. As you can see today, I finished up my level select screen. And if I go to my scenes, as I've shown before, this is the game I'll be making and that I will show you how to make too, so you can release it. In today's video, we are going to find it. We are going to be populating our board with individual colored dots that will represent the sprites and objects we will later match in the game. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go here into our art folder and click on our dot. We're going to match our pixels per unit to the size of our dot. We're going to make them both 512. We're going to hit apply. We're going to do the same thing to our color palette, even though it isn't 512 either, but we'll make everything consistent. Then I'm going to drag the dot right there and I'm going to drag the color palette right there. And now I'm going to Go ahead and duplicate our dots. How many colors we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's make all eight for now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to take my first dot and we're going to move it up here. And we'll start off with red right here. So I'll call this dot the red dot. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to clicking on my dot, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit this little eyedropper here. I'm going to push on it, and I'm going to click on that red right there. And that, that basically is just a color picker, it's, excuse me, color picker. And it's going to match whatever I click over. So as you can see right there, I have my red dot. Next one I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this dot, and we'll call it the orange dot. And we're just going to repeat this over and over again for all of them. And I'm going to click on my picker. I'm going to go to the next color. I'm going to make that the orange dot. And we'll just move it right there. I went and jumped ahead and just completed all the other dots. So you didn't have to watch me doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, I, as you could see, I got a pink dot, purple dot, blue dot, light blue dot, green dot, yellow dot, orange dot, and red dot. Now I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to click on my prefabs folder. And actually, first, let me just fix that spelling right there so they're all consistent. Now I'm going to take these and I'm just going to make them into prefabs along with my tile background, like so. And I'm actually going to delete all of these and get them off the board. So now we're going to make a uh, adjustments to our board I'm gonna increase its size a little bit so we can get some matches of five in a row and as you can see when I hit play it will be off centered so we're gonna fix that I'm gonna go to the board script and I'm gonna change this to three I'm gonna change this to five I already did all this beforehand this is how I'm able to do this so fast there was a little bit of trial and error getting its size so put three and five here, just like you did with the board. So they're both centered to the same spot. And I changed my camera size to 7.5 and I hit play. And now our board has a seven by 10 grid and it fits relatively center in our scene here. So when we hit play, our board populates, but this is kind of messy because uh, it just creates all these separate tile background clones right onto our scene here. So we're going to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to open up my board script. And right here, I already have the line of code here that is going to clean this up. The first one is background tile.transform.parent equals this dot transform. And what this is going to do, it's going to set the tiles as a child of the uh, board. And then the second one right here, once it does that, it will name each individual tile uh, by its I and J component. So I'm going to hit save on that. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to let this compile. And taking a little longer to, 
to compile than I would have thought. There we go. And now I'm going to hit play. Now it's going to load this. And now, as you can see, you got this arrow here next to the board. And if I go down, all the tiles are a child of the board now. And they're named after, let's go into the scene so we can see it better. They are named after the, um, their INJ components. Here's 0, 0, here's 0, 3, here's 1, 3. So that way you could see where on this grid the tile lies. So now we're going to add our dots into the grid. We're going to go here to scripts and we're going to open up our background tile uh, script. And as you can see, like last time, the uh, code is already here. So you're going to create a public game object and it's going to be called dots and it's going to be an array. That's why these brackets are here. And over here is a function we're calling, which is down here called initialize. This is where we call the function like last time. And this is where we write the function itself. It's called initialize. It's a private void initialize parentheses. Here are the brackets and here's the applied code. So in here, we're going to create an int called dot to use. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to apply a number for every color, zero through seven, because there's eight different colors. Uh, and it's going to randomly choose a number, and this is how it's going to do it. It's going to start from zero, and it's going to go to the length of the dot, which is going to be seven. So that's how a random range number works. If you want random numbers, that's how you do it. You type random range, and in the argument, you pick your starting point and your end point. And in this case, our end point is the length of the dots, which is there's eight of them. But it starts at zero, so the last one will be seven. And then we're going to create a game object, very similar to how we created our game object here. Only it's going to be a dot, of course, and we're going to instantiate it. And like we said, there, there's going to be three components to this. There's going to be uh, what it is, where it is, and um, uh, whether it's rotating. And so what it is is a dot, but it's based off of this number right here. So whatever number gets chosen here would be placed here so it randomly populates it. Then we want to make sure it goes onto the board. It becomes a child of the board like it did back here. We're doing the same thing. And then we want to name it like we did back here, but we are not using an iteration over here. We're just populating with dots. So we can just say this dot game object dot name, and it will make it the name of the dot, red dot, pink dot, yellow dot, etc. So let's go back into Unity right here. And we're going to go to the prefabs. We're going to click on our tile prefab. Here is our dots. I'm just going to click on the arrow. This is where it's going to populate our array. And it's public because back here we made this a public game object, this array of dots. This, this, this tells it when we put it here to make it an array right here. And this is the format for the array. Uh, there's a couple ways you could do this. We have eight different, let me count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we could just put an eight here and we can just fit the dots right in. We can make the first one red, yellow, purple. Uh, another way of doing this, let me just take this away by subtract, or actually just put zero. And another way we could do this is I can take all of these and oops, I highlighted that to one. I could take all of these. No, it's not working. Let me actually let me lock that there. So I before I kept clicking and it kept hitting this when I wanted to do that. If I hit lock, it will just lock this in the inspector. So I can click whatever I want here and it will keep that in the inspector. So you know how that function works. And I'll click all my dots and I'll go over here. And you see how, like, when I go over it, it goes from a, a circle with the slash across to this box with a plus sign. That means I can take all of them and just populate the boxes or the elements in one shot. And these are what these different uh, lines are called. They're all called elements. It's what's in, a, excuse me, in an array is elements. So it goes from zero to seven. So now that that is done, and I already did it, but... Don't forget to unlock your inspector unless you really want that to stay there. And I'm going to hit play. And I know it's going to happen, but I'll wait so I can show you. So our background tiles are in front 
of our dots. We can fix that just by unclicking that. So we can see what we're working with. The background tile was, picture was just a, really a guide to work with. Uh, we may not need it from this point forward. Um, so now our dots have been randomly placed into our board. Right here, as you can see, is our uh, dot itself. Actually, let me go into the scene. So we have the tile here and the dots with it. They're both in the same spot, as you can see. See, we got the green dot right there. And then for, we'll just go down a little bit. And here's our, our tile with its location. And right here is our red dot. So we're going to stop here today. Wasn't a very long video because we're going to be going over uh, swipe controls in the next one. I like short videos because that way when you go through the playlist, if you want to go back and look at stuff, you can go and find the subject rather quickly. If the videos are real long, that makes it a little more difficult. So as always, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. And a big special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. See you next time.